I think people fear rootlessness in volunteerism. They fear a lack of safety nets or a lack of a frame. Without a state, who will pick up the slack for people who have serious illnesses and who are already lying in beds in state hospitals? Who will, who will police? Who will we turn to for consistent and just law? You know, what will happen to all the dollars that we already have in the absence of a state? How will we be protected from whatever there is in, in the state of nature? Many ask, how will all of these things be done without the artificial man, without the Leviathan, without the state? All these things were done without a state. Education, currency, welfare, and providing health services to the poor. Whatever your opinion of the church is, the church did function as something as a voluntary states in parts of America that were functionally in anarchy. Well, what about police? Well, they really didn't have police, and neither do you, seriously. If some thug were to come up to you and put a gun in your face and demand your wallet, what are the odds that a policeman would see it? Militias protected communities from nothing, really. Native Americans, I guess in theory one militia could attack another militia, but since a militia is an emergent unit, decisions to fight are made by its actual members. And, and so you get a lot less wars when the soldiers themselves uh, make the decision on whether to go to war. Roads, private laws, canals, railroads, all done without a state. There would be less of them with, without a state, as there should be. There's way too many roads. Uh, law, all done without a state. Link in the description. Currency, <laughs> currency, etc., etc. And if you read American history, it reads as the systematic destruction of, you know, privately settling certain things. It reads as the destruction of emergent social institutions, institutions that were incrementally built up in response to needs. You know, people are using this path a lot. Well, let's pave it in response to that need. You know, let's pave this dirt path and make it nicer because everyone's using it. The town has grown to a size where we need formal written laws. Well, okay, let's get together and figure, at, figure it out in response to what the local common laws are and what the issues are that need to be settled and we need to have you know, a more you know, on paper and, and by the book law as opposed to just catch as catch can. A classic example of state encroachment on these things would be the friendly societies in Britain. These were organizations that provided unemployment benefits, old age pensions, health care costs. You know, some would pay for it. You know, sometimes you'd have members actually go to each other's houses. You know, sometimes a friendly society would have its own doctors or they'd have their own lawyers and, you know, they'd, they'd have things and it'd be a safety net. And, you know, you'd have lawyers who would work for the society but also work on their own or you'd have doctors who did their entire career within the society, you know, as is, as needed. It's emergent. It's in response to what the demands are. But then by 1911, Lloyd George began to get the state involved in welfare in Britain. And what happened is oh so predictable. The British government began taxing people to pay for this cradle-to-grave welfare state, and thus people had less money to spend on the friendly societies. They also had less need from the, for the friendly societies since they could just fall back onto the state and so the friendly societies just withered away. And this is the story repeated throughout the world in every tax farm or country and in everything government does. You have private entities doing X. Government claims it must do X instead. And the rationale can be whatever. Perhaps people are too greedy to provide welfare and so only the state can do it. And so then the state provides X with your money and now you have, now you have less money to pay for X on your own. And less need to do so because you can just fall back onto the state. This is how dependence on the state is fostered. And so when people say without a state there's nothing that exists to manage our society, they are correct because the state has destroyed it. The state has in effect ripped the fiber out of society and then presented itself as the new fiber. But the state's fiber is not a product of painstaking trial and error, of response to need that changes incrementally as populations grow and change. No, its fiber is just ham-handedly bashed in some brutish caveman way. Right? It's like having a men to design a city. 
It's fucking retarded. That's what we have now, and this fiber sucks. And when you walk down a street in maybe a city or a suburb, it's very easy to tell uh, private and public things apart. If it sucks, it's public. If it looks nice, it's private. Go by that rule, and you'll be correct like 99% of the time. And if you're still not sure, look at the price tag for another clue. The hallmarks of state fiber are that they are extremely expensive and mundane looking. An analogy that I kind of liked is that emergent fiber is like a YouTube account that grows naturally. You have an account, you put videos, and people who like you will watch you. Whereas a state is like sub for sub. Another YouTube analogy is how, you know, it seems like Amendem seems to view his channel like a state. Yeah, and that his state has 2,500 members and 2,500 warriors who he leads into battle not realizing that his sub count is based on nothing more than his behavior. His subscribers will support him if they think he's right. They're not his, his, his soldiers. You can't command them. You can't command your subscribers. You can't command your viewers. It's all social. And when Amendum says something stupid, his subscribers will one star him because they think he's stupid. To grow out of a state, a community must rebuild the fiber, not the state fiber, not the state non-answers of some Congress hundreds of miles away that doesn't know you or care about you. Real fiber. And real fiber is private. And I think that if people started offering private alternatives to state, quote, services, close quote, we would be shocked at how easy it is to do these things. And I think people, once doing these, would look at the state which have, has been providing fiber at such ridiculous cost and with the constant psychodrama of politics and look at the, that and say, what the hell is wrong with you guys? This is easy. And take private roads. Like, like say you make a private road. At first, what you would do is you, you'd make the private road open to all. See what happens. And then, and, and, and it would probably work just fine if you did that. But if too many people were using it and it was getting overused, then what you would do is you would put a sign on it that said um, it's a private road and you have to either pay a toll or have an electronic pass. And if strangers just drove on the road even though you had the sign, which I doubt because, you know, when I see a sign that says private road, we'll, you know, we'll rip out your larynx and beat you with it if we catch you or something like that. I don't, I, you know, I don't do that. I, I stay off of private property because I have no idea in hell how this private property is being enforced. But if people were driving on the private road even when, when there was a sign, you know, you could have retractable spikes, you know, which wouldn't be hard to make. You know, go to a hardware store, I can figure, you know, I can think of a device right now. And this is what used to be the characteristic of America. Uh, you know, you have a problem, well, figure out a solution. Right? Yes, there will be free riders. Yes, there will be agitators. But Jesus Christ, I talk about this stuff, and it's like I'm talking to a bunch of little kids. What if someone doesn't obey the law? What if someone steals something? What if someone blows sewage into my yard? What if Bob's house catches on fire and he didn't pay for fire insurance? You know, what if Tim hits me? You know, there won't be anyone to tell him to. And it's just so ridiculous. First, it assumes that states solve these problems in the first place. You know, people need to get away from just so lazily and so uncreatively falling back onto the non-answer of state fiber. And we are starting to pay a very high price for this state fiber. Look at taxes, look at the debt, look at the war. What a wreckage, what a mess. The answer is not another state. It's not another ham-handed, top-down, emendum, archon approach. The answer is science. The answer is actually Figuring out you actually going out there. No one's going to go out there for you. Actually going out there, figuring out and doing what works. Figuring out what is emergent and what is an extension of the spontaneous order. And for now, I call this anarchism. And I say a true anarchist will support emergent local social institutions. And if it weren't for this bastardized vocabulary we have, one that was forged in the bloody, bloody history of states, we wouldn't be calling it anarchy, for there's a word that's a lot more fitting for what I'm talking about. And that word is socialism.